Today I'm going to go over a highly requested video on creating consistent multiple characters using flux context. Let's get started. So I've broken down the video into two parts. Part one will be starting with one character and then part two will be starting with two trained characters. And I'm assuming you already have a trained character. So go ahead and generate your starting image. In my case, I had Cody here in front of his house. And because we're going to be using chat to edit, my advice to you is to make sure your starting image is in the correct aspect ratio. And that's important to know because if you use the create page to use flux context, you can adjust the aspect ratio, but you have to keep bringing in the reference image if it changes. So that's why using chat to edit really frees you up from that process. So it's best to start with the aspect ratio that you want your visual story to be consistent throughout. Once you have your starting image, you want to go to chat to edit here. You're going to click on new image here. You can click on upload if you saved it locally or by your history, you can pick it through your gallery. Now you can select character, but the problem is if I choose my character, it's going to default to a portrait aspect ratio. That's not what we want here. So once you've imported your starting image, now you want to think of your next scene. And the premise of my story is basically Cody's day. He's going through school, he's going to meet a friend, have lunch, have some fun, and then bring her home, right? So go ahead and insert your prompt depending on what your scene is. I'll put mine on the screen. And if you haven't watched the previous intro video to Flex Context, I highly suggest you watch it because I'm not going to go over all the little details. So since we're changing the setting, that's what I put in my prompt. Change the setting to a classroom. And then we're identifying the reference, which is Cody here. And the way I'm doing that is saying the boy with brown hair, or I could even say the boy with a blue shirt. Once again, you want to associate something about that character so that the model knows, okay, let me take that info and associate this with this character. And then I have him sitting at a desk, raising one arm just to state some sort of action. And then I describe his surroundings by saying there are other kids on other desks. And very important here, maintain his exact facial features and clothing. Now, if you want him to be smiling or laughing, you don't necessarily have to put facial features. It should stay consistent. But in terms of clothing, you always want to put maintain the clothing. Once you're happy with that prompt, go ahead and generate. As a result of my prompt, you see we have Cody lifting his hand just as I prompted. Now you can clearly see that the consistency is there from the outfit even down to the buttons. His facial features are accurate. So let's work on the next scene. What I had in mind was him to be having lunch with his friend. And theoretically, I can iterate from this image to create the new one. However, I highly suggest that you start with your initial image. Reason being, the more you iterate, the more the image starts to lose quality. By going back to your initial image, it's like you're starting again and you're ensuring better quality. Furthermore, the previous image here doesn't show his shoes. So it's quite likely that his shoes won't be accurate depending on the scene, right? So for the next prompt, I have him sitting with a girl having lunch. And I was very specific about this scene, having the playground in the background, the girl drinking out of a pop can with a straw coming out of it, and even down to Cody holding his sandwich. For the next scene, we're going to keep a similar prompt, change the setting to a playground. Again, the boy with brown hair. Now this time he's on a swing. Since we've introduced a new character, we also have to identify her. So in the prompt, I put the girl with a pink dress is on a swing. And then I end it with maintain their exact facial features and clothing. Once again, if we look at her dress, those patterns are very accurate, which is super impressive. Basically, we just have to continue with the same concept in prompting. Now he's going to be walking her home, and I used a similar prompt. Change the setting to a suburban street. The boy with brown hair is walking beside the girl with a pink dress. Again, identifying them both maintain their exact facial features and clothing. 
Now, if you do start to see a bit of degradation like artifacting, you can send it to upscaling. You could use the refine upscaling just to be a bit more creative with details, but the precise setting will preserve the original image and it'll clean up those artifacts really well. Now, I will tell you this scene took me a few tries because of the difference of perspective. So I had to state in the prompt rear view of the boy with brown hair, waving to the girl with pink dress. Now the trick here was I had to kind of trick the model to give me this perspective. So I ended up with girl with a pink dress who stands by the house door in the background waving back. And even though she's not at the door, just by putting that line, I was able to get this perspective, which was what I was thinking of initially. Unfortunately, I didn't keep the failed attempt, but it was putting her too close initially. And Cody here kept facing the camera. And then for the last scene, I used the initial image once again, since Cody was going to be solo. Very similar prompt, except for the action is he jumps in the air with a fist pump. And this time I didn't put maintain his facial features because his expression has changed now, right? So the prompt had, he has a big smile. And I only put maintain his exact clothing to ensure consistency of his outfit. Now, in case you didn't know, we brought in Kling 2.1. If you go into the video tab here, you see we've got Kling 2.1 at the top. I'm not going to go into detail about Kling because Helena has got a video that's going to come out in the next day or two. But in the meantime, what you can do now is take the same images, bring them into Kling and animate them as a video. Now I'm sure you're wondering how can we do the same thing with two trained characters. Quite easy actually. So choose one of your characters and I encourage you to generate an image with them in a white background. I mean it really doesn't matter. You could set it up where they're already in an environment like a house or whatever scenery of your choice. The most important thing, once again, is to set up the aspect ratio, especially if you're going to do video. You want to generate the image in that aspect ratio, in my case, 16 by 9. So here we have Grandpa in his grandpa outfit, and this was a happy accident. He's got socks with open toes. I thought that was really funny, so I left it. And the prompt is super simple. A front view perspective of Grandpa or your character standing still white background mine says off center but it wasn't giving me it but whatever at the end of the day it didn't matter and then you want to create your second character in a similar way make sure they're both in a full body shot with your second character i encourage you to download it locally because for the next step we're going to need to bring that image in and choose one of your characters to bring it into the canvas. It doesn't matter which one. Go ahead and click this icon. That'll bring you into the canvas. Make sure to select the image. And we're going to click on this icon here. And it's going to convert this image to a blend board. And I have found that this is the best way to bring in multiple characters in the same scene. In a video to come, I'm going to go over how to keep your backgrounds consistent. So make sure to tune in for that one. On the right, you'll have your blend board settings. We have our aspect ratios. Our blend settings here, we'll just use subtle. And typically I would tell you to use add image layer to bring in that image. But currently there's a bug where if you bring in an image, the quality degrades a little bit. So I encourage you not to use this right now at least at the time of recording this video. And instead, you just want to manually drop it into the canvas here. This will ensure that the quality remains the same. And then you just want to kind of plop it on top. It's going to automatically remove the background. And then you just want to compose the scene here. 
and you want to compose the second character not too close to the other character, but at least side by side. Man, Cody's head is as big as Grumpa's. <laughs> If we look at the right panel here, you see now there's a layer for both characters. And all we need to do is click on Blend. Once it's done, you can preview it by clicking on the View icon here. And you will see that they're now blended together. You can see there's a bit of a shadow here. And I would advise you to save it to your generation history so that it's easily accessible to use it in chat to edit. I always like to save my assets locally as well. So now when we go back to chat to edit, we can easily click on new image and then bring in the image that we just worked on. So in the prompt, I'm going to put them in an ice cream parlor getting ice cream. And here's the result of that prompt. Obviously, the same methods apply that we just went over earlier. Once again, I'd like to highlight the consistency in the clothing, their faces. Here's another scene of them go-karting. And uh, I would say using the initial image as your starting reference is the best practice, at least from what I've seen. And typically what I would do is that if there's something about this image that I want to change, then I would obviously do it on this image. So let's say we want to change the go-kart colors to blue. So I would prompt for that, but then add maintain their exact clothing, facial expressions, composition, and pose. As a result, we have some blue go-karts. If we switch between the two, you see that they are still consistent throughout. So that's how I would approach editing on the generated image. But anytime I want to change a scene, I'd always go back to the initial image. This same concept can be used for characters with complex clothing or attire. That's going to be in the next video that's part of my consistent character series. And if you haven't watched the video on the introductory to flux context video, make sure to check it out right here. Until that next video, my friends, happy creating.